Hi Fiber friends, welcome to episode 6 of the Botanical Knitter Vlogcast. I'm Emily, I'm a knitter, spinner, sometimes natural dyer, sometimes sewer, and sometimes vlogcaster. It's been two months since I filmed my last episode, and it's not because I haven't had things to talk about, because I can one, always find yarny, fibery things to talk about. And I've also been doing a ton of things from zombie knit apocalypse to local meetups. I'm doing a really cool sheep to shawl project I need to talk to you all about. But at one point, it's become like so overwhelming that I have so much to talk about and I didn't want a three hour episode. And for me, my anxiety and perfectionism turns up as procrastination. So when I worry about something, I put it off, which makes no sense, right? I should just grab it by its horns, do the thing, get it done. Um, but that's not how I operate. Or I, it's I'm in the works of uh, learning to just dive right in. So I'm going to break up several of the things that have been happening into different episodes with the hope that I will film more frequently. I'll post more consistently. Um, and you'll be able to hear about all my fun adventures, even if it wasn't the most timely timing. Does that make sense? Well, that's what I said. Timely timing. All right, before I dive into my finished objects, my whips, all of those fun things, housekeeping. Uh, you can find me on Instagram as The Botanical Knitter and on Ravelry as Botanical Knitter. I love plants, I love yarn, so it all comes together. All right, let's just dive in. Finished objects. I don't have as many finished objects as you would think given my usual pace of knitting and um, how long it's been since I've last filmed, but I do have four finished objects to talk to you about and three of them are not here. So I'm not going to spend as much time as I probably would about each garment or accessory because they're not here and you can't really see them. I'll put in pictures, but sometimes that's not the best substitution. So my first in-person finished object, first and only, is the BRB shawl by Casey Hurley. Sorry, Casey, if I said your name wrong. This is a shawl that I test knit. It's gorgeous. It is BRB, BRB stands for broken rib. So you can see that beautiful texture. I also am really happy with the yarn that I picked for this. It's busy, um, but I think it looks so nice. I would be wearing it, but it is 95, 96 degrees, feels like a hundred some degrees outside. So I have the fan on my feet and I have a t-shirt and shorts on. Um, so no knitted objects today. While the air is on, I live in a very old house and that air conditioner, knock on wood, she's on her last leg. We'll see if she makes it through the summer. Everybody, fingers crossed, send that. I'm pointing to the air conditioner right there. Send her all the love. So I don't turn it up too high because I'm afraid. I don't want to spend that money. I want to spend that money on yarn and fiber. <laughs> Relatable, right? So the one thing I also really do love about this is the shape. As you can see, not too big, not too small, just right. Um, it took two skeins of DK weight yarn and the fit of it is really nice. It's not too bulky. There's not too much to wrap because of how long the edges are. It wraps very easily. You could use a shawl pin or a shawl sandwich, um, but I won't think I, I don't really need to. It would only be an accessory rather than a must because it will comfortably stay here even with all my frantic movements to talk about yarn. So I think it looks nice because it's an all over consistent texture. It doesn't matter how you have it wrapped. It'll show up and also the backside and the front side, in my opinion, are equally as gorgeous. I used uh, yarn from the Kinetic Knitter, who's here in Minnesota. This is Tail Feather. I knit my friend uh, Brooklyn Raglan using this yarn. So she bought the sweater quantity DK weight, and as part of my payment, I kept the leftover yarn. And it's been sitting in my stash for that perfect accessory, and this is it. It's pretty dreamy. Um, this pattern I test knit and it will be out at the end of August, I believe. Um, as I'm filming, I'm looking at my computer, it's August 22nd, and so this should be out late next week. Um, so I'll be sure to link to Casey's Ravelry page so you can see it there when it's published. 
All right, my next three finished objects aren't here with me, so sorry about that, but I'll do my best with pictures. So the first two finished objects were also test knits, and they're not here because I submitted them into the Minnesota State Fair. Uh, there is a needleworks, crafting, making competition, and so I thought, why the hell not? So I did it, and I'm super anxious about it. Last year, I forgot to submit it, um, submit any knitted garments. So this year, I remembered. I was like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. But remember, anxiety shows up for me as procrastination. So I was anxious about what I was going to submit and were they perfect enough? Um, so I kind of last minute submitted the form and willy nilly picked what I submitted. That being said, I'm really happy with both of those finished objects. And so I'm excited to see what the judges have to say. Um, and I'm not going to base my self worth on it. Everybody remind me that I said that at 4.04 p.m. on the 22nd. I'm not going to base my knitting self-worth on what judges say. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. So the first finished object that I submitted was the Wildflowers Tea by Tiff Nealon. It's a very fun construction. Um, you can see an Instagram post where I talk a little bit more about why I liked this garment so much. It is a short sleeve tee. Um, you can make it a little bit cropped. It's got a very beautiful lace pattern across the front. And I really enjoyed every step of making it. I usually say I only want to do top down in the round, but lately I found I'm enjoying um, more challenging construction. And not challenging as in hard, but challenging as in there's a couple more steps than just knitting, knitting, knitting in the round and doing some increases. So that's been a good find for me this summer is that I have been maybe unnecessarily writing off patterns when I actually do enjoy something beyond top down in the round. I also used my own yarn for this test knit. I used yarn that was naturally dyed with flowers from my garden. So I thought that was perfectly named the Wildflowers Tea using flowers from my garden. So that was fun to knit with something that I dyed myself. My second object that I submitted to the State Fair is the Wool Gathering Shawl by Professor Pearl. I loved this pattern and not just because I'm a huge fan of Nicole um, and I'll link to her podcast below um, and she's just an incredible human, but the shawl itself is so um, intentional. And I think that's just Nicole. Nicole feels like a very mindful, intentional person. Um, wool gathering, it's creating community, creating space, it's dreamy, it's its thinking beyond, and, and that's the name of the pattern. And the shawl was that. Um, it was a wonderful mix of garter and then these beautiful chevron patterns. And then she mixes texture and yarn weight to create this really dreamy look from fingering weight, garter, to then you have mohair or surrey lace weight, lace. And it's just really kind of ethereal. So I loved knitting this. I learned a thing or two about blocking shawls with this one. I blocked it twice before I submitted it to the state fair. And I'll say that this pattern came out as um, Nicole was headed to Flock Fiber Festival. So she created this pattern just for Flock. I knew I was going to Flock, so I thought, why not test knit? So then I was able to show Nicole the pattern I test knit for her in person. We have a picture of us wearing it together. Um, and that was really fun. I used Suburban Stitcher yarn for fingering the fingering weight. That pale sage green gray is Petrichor. Um, that was the uh, show colorway from last year. I got it at Dallas DFW Fiber Festival. And then I used uh, Beachy Breezy, which is a new to me dyer. I used their Surrey and it was really a lovely color that went perfectly with that Petrichor colorway. So again, that shawl was submitted for the State Fair. Of course, I'm anxious about uh, was the lace neat enough? Did I do a good enough job blocking? Um, but again, I'm just going to let it go because at least I did it, right? All right. My fourth and final finished object that I'm going to talk about today is the Salty Air Tea by Samantha Guerin. This is a pattern I've talked about before. I have seen so many of you wearing this pattern out and about, and rightfully so. It's a beautiful pattern. It fits like a dream on every body that I've seen. Um, and so I knit this as a sample for Courtney at Silly Goose Yarns. I knit it in one of her newer colorways called No Big Deal. And a little bit of the sale from every skein goes to Tigers, which is an organization here in Minnesota that works to support trans kids. 
So for many reasons, I was excited to knit that one up for Courtney. Um, and she wore it to Flock Fiber Festival and it looked so good. And she styled it with these red linen pants, which red and orange, not my color. And it looked so good on her. And it was like a proud maker moment. You're like, I can make things that people want to wear. So those are my finished objects. I'll transition to whips because I have, I am like two rounds from having a finished object. And that is another ranunculus. So this will be my fourth ranunculus that I've knit. Isn't it so pretty? So I am nearly to the end. I'm in the ribbing section of the hem. Um, I've decided I'm gonna do an I-cord bind off. Um, I did I-cord bind off on the sleeves, get it to focus there. So I'm almost done. I was like, maybe I should wait to film until I finish this. And I was like, do not, Emily, you can't wait any longer to film. This is used with um, Shibui twig yarn, which is a mix of linen, recycled silk, and wool, I think. Um, it's pretty, I feel like you can hear it. It's pretty crunchy right now, but I'm sure it'll soften as it blocks. I bought this at the Yarn Shop Hop at Harriet and Alice, which is a yarn shop kind of near my house. Um, and it was on super sale because Shibui RIP is out of business or is going out of business. So it was deeply discounted. And I thought this would be a really fun, drapey, open kind of gauge knit. I modified this by only doing short rows in the back. I skipped the front short rows. Um, I picked up the sleeves and added about nine rows before I did that I-cord bind off. And then I'm knitting the pattern a little bit longer than I usually would. Um, because, okay, question for the group. Does linen shrink or does linen grow? I don't know. When I have knit with linen in the past, I think it's had enough wool that it hasn't shrunk after I blocked it. Like it's grown or stayed about the same. So I, I don't know how this is going to turn out when I black it. I guess I'll report back later, but comment below and give me a, an idea of what I should keep an eye out for. The plan um, is I cast this on around my birthday, which was in early August, and I'm going to wear it to Puerto Rico. I'm going to Puerto Rico for work. I'm going to a conference, the State of Black Health Conference, and my husband and I are going in a couple of days early. We're going to stay in the rainforest. We're going to do some hiking gonna eat some great food and I thought with the weather this would be a very lovely top to wear plus uh, it's these these are always really good for re-wearing like anytime I take a knitted object with me on trips I can wear it so many times right because wool has that antimicrobial bit never gets too stinky um, so plus it'll breathe nicely in that beachy environment so hopefully uh, you'll I'll get some really cool pictures of me wearing it in Puerto Rico and you will see that soon all right, my next whip goes along the line of what I was saying earlier about a not so straightforward construction and really enjoying it. You've seen me talk about this at least once and I have been slowly, slowly working on this one, which is weird for me, but it fits back to my, the intention from my very first podcast episode of like, I'm not gonna rush to finish something. I'm not gonna do these self-imposed deadlines. And I have a couple of whips here that I've just been slowly working on and I've been enjoying it and not stressing myself out about not finishing it immediately or not doing it by a deadline. And I, I like it. You're all like, duh, Emily, stress-free knitting is enjoyable. Imagine that. Anyways, so this whip is the Field Day Cardigan by Ozetta. Ozetta Knits? Ozetta? I can't remember. I'll link it. You know it. Um... I started this probably near the end of May. I worked on it a little bit at Zombie Knit Apocalypse in June, and then I really started working on it this last week. It's a fun, weird construction. This will be eventually the front of it. One side, two side. I'm knitting it using cotton fluff from Lavender Loon held double. So it's really thick and soft and squishy and I can't wait to wear it. Um, I think I've talked about that. I've only ever really made pullovers. Um, I haven't done cardigans and it's because I'm always like, oh, I don't wanna knit and purl and I don't know yet how to steek. I say yet, cause someday I will steek. Um, but it's like, get over it girl, this is fun. So I've enjoyed this pattern a lot. I'm really happy with how these two held together are knitting up. 
think I'll be finished with this sooner rather than later um, because I'm just really eager to wear it. I have so many fun knitting shirts like this one, Knitting Libations Good and Good Vibrations. Um, you can't see all of it from, where did I get that? Farmer's Daughter, right? Um, and so then I can still wear my fun tees and my knitted objects. I was able to get some amazing buttons for this cardigan. Um, these buttons are from Twin Mountain Handcrafts. And look how perfect they are. So they're iridescent and they're textured. <laughs> Can you name this movie? Tell me what movie this is. Coraline. Anyways, um, I think it's going to be really cool with this. I, it came in beautiful packaging and I knew that my dog was going to try and eat that packaging. I knew it. And so a couple days ago I came upstairs. I was like, Sam's been quietly suspicious. Uh, and I guess she did eat the packaging. So the packaging, let's see, do I have a picture of what the packaging looks like? Came in a really cute package like this. My dog ate it, but she, I caught her before she did anything to the buttons. So uh, reminder, Emily, put your stuff away. It's not that hard. Put it away. So anyways, this should be done soon. I'm really loving this. A lot of you, I think, had talked about that you were planning on doing cardigans this summer. Um, and, you know, I think they're great. I do have a giveaway. I'm going to bury the lead on this one. Um, why don't I do it right now? We're here. We're going to interrupt the whips. So Twin Mountain Handcrafts are the best. They're just the kindest, best people. Um, and when I messaged, they had watched one of my episodes, which was amazing. They're like, hey, like, can we send you anything? Do you have any interest in anything? And I said, well, I'm going to knit a cardigan. Can I have four buttons? And so they worked with me to create these buttons. And then I said, um, can I do a giveaway on my podcast? And they said, yes, yes, you can. So they have sent me some goodies to give away to you all. So the first are these wooden buttons. They're monstera leaves. Hello, botanical. Uh, I took everything my willpower to not keep these for me because I wanted to share the love with you all. So this, this package comes with one, two, three, four, five monstera wooden buttons. Um, and then also a stitch marker. It's got, it's so hard to see, sorry. A really cool Twin Mountain Handcrafts progress keeper that you can also use as a stitch marker. It has that perfect clasp back. So um, it can be used for multiple things. And then they also sent a set of stitch markers. Um, these are their wildflower stitch markers. Each one of these um, is a, the acrylic base. It's got, right, acrylic, resin resin. Um, it's glittery, bright different colors, and each graphic is a different wildflower. Um, so this is my giveaway for you all. Thank you to Twin Mountain Handcrafts for supporting this giveaway and for just being all around incredible humans. I adore you both. Um, so how, how should we do this? Comment below. Comment below and tell me what you would use the buttons for. That's how we'll do the giveaway. That's how I'll track it. I'll pick a random comment and at the next episode, I will kind of pick a winner and we'll coordinate. So comment below, tell me what you'd use these buttons for and the giveaway will come with both of these. Let's do this. Both of these items from Twin Mountain Handcrafts. All right, let's keep going. Um, my last whip that I'm going to talk about is the Lone Horse Shawl by Casey, the same Casey that did the sweater I just talked to you about. She's doing a knit along right now for this shawl. I cast mine on last night while we were watching Peaky Blinders. I always want to say Peaky Binders, Peaky Blinders, um, and it's a very cool lace pattern. One skein of fingering. I am using the yarn um, that Casey used to design the pattern. It's Yarn Citizen from Jimmy Bean's Wool. Um, it's this gorgeous green. Hello, perfect color for me. And it's just a really simple lace pattern, but it looks so nice. So yeah, there's a knit along happening right now. It's the Lone Horse Shawl Call Knit Along. You can track it on Instagram. Um, so just fresh into that one, but I did that much in just less than an hour. So it's a good pattern that cruises. And the yarn is really nice to work with. It's a little bit, um, 
I think we use the word rustic the wrong way because rustic implies that it's not wearable or at least when I hear other knitters say rustic it's in like a oh it's rustic but it's beautiful it has good texture it will be comfortable on the neck um, but it's not super wash slick which is really nice okay I'm going to talk about one future knit and then I'm gonna briefly dive into, briefly, I've never been brief in my life. Then I'm gonna talk about zombie knit apocalypse and acquisitions. So if you are here for just the knitting talk, I mean, that's gonna be in all of this, but I'm gonna get a little bit more loosey-goosey and tell some stories and share some purchases. Okay, so a future knit, which also corresponds with my next event that I'll be going to. Uh, which is Sacred Sheep. Sacred Sheep is a new fiber festival in Portland on November 4th. I was already going to be in Portland for work, destiny, and so now I'm going to go to Sacred Sheep and Nicole from Professor Pearl is going with me. It's going to be the best. So we decided that we were going to participate in the knit along or the make along for Sacred Sheep. There's some rules around it, um, ma mainly use yarn fiber from some of the vendors. So Lola Bean Yarn Co. is going to be a sacred sheep vendor, which I am so excited for. And last fall at Rhinebeck, I purchased a sweater quantity of this gorgeous colorway, Leaf Voter Suppression Behind, and so I knew it was destiny. So at Flock Fiber Festival, which I won't talk about beyond this, um, I was shopping for a contrast color. And I, when I looked up projects on Ravelry of makers that use this yarn, uh, one of the patterns was this gorgeous cream colorway. So I found this. This is linen from Explorer Knits. And I swatched for my milkweed. Did I say the pattern yet? I'm doing the milkweed DK. Um, here's what it looks like. Is this not the dreamiest thing? Hello, fall. She is ready for it color work, a beautiful contrast, but not super stark, I don't think, especially when it gets through this every other stitch bit. And it'll be milkweed flowers, which is beautiful. I know milkweed is spring and summer, but you know what? I love color work and I love flowers, so that's what it's gonna be. So I have a bag full of this gorgeous yarn. So I'm gonna finish the ranunculus and I'm gonna cast this on next. I was so excited to swatch because I think this is gonna be dreamy and Nicole is gonna knit the same one. Um, if you watch one of her more recent podcast episodes, she talks about the yarn she's using and man, we couldn't be more different, but I love that. I think that captures our personalities really well and I'm excited to be twinning with Nicole at Sacred Sheep. If you are going to Sacred Sheep, comment below and let me know and we should find ways to meet up. Um, flock I met a ton of people and it just made my heart so full all right so now we're going to talk about acquisitions which goes hand in hand with zombie knit apocalypse so zombie knit apocalypse is a retreat that happens every year in the springtime June in Rochester Minnesota um, it's a smaller retreat um, so smaller in terms of the size, there's usually a wait list. Uh, a couple of us booked right away. My aunt and I initially were gonna go together and then a couple nitty friends ended up also coming along. We stayed at a hotel across the street from where the, the retreat was and it was pretty low key. There were classes throughout two days um, and the classes, the class fee, the materials were included in the registration fee. Um, I did one class on color work and um, botanical stitches. So stitch patterns inspired by plants and flowers. Hello, perfect. I really enjoyed that class. The teacher was also very kind and very enjoyable to be around. She has a podcast, so I'll link to that below. Um, so I did take one class, but really the bulk of my time was spent knitting and socializing and meeting people and talking with people. Um, I had a little bit of a surreal moment. Um, we were doing one of the meetups was a beer trade and I love craft beer. So I brought a mix and match six pack of beer from around either Minnesota or the Midwest. And I was talking to a mom and to a daughter, Anne and Zoe. Um, and I don't know how we got, I started talking about, oh, I work in public health and so-and-so this, or somehow it was related to the conversation. And Anne was like, I know, I watch your podcast. And I was like, what? People watch this thing? People watch me talk to myself? Um, and they ended up being like the 
the dreamiest people. They were one, just, I loved their relationship together, the mom daughter relationship. Um, and then two, they were just both really kind, funny, enjoyable people, like great energy, really kind hearted people. So this is my little shout out to you two. Um, it was great to get to know you two. Uh, Zoe came with us to dinner one of the nights and that was really fun. So lots of knitting, lots of meeting people, lots of chatting, lots of admiring knits, um, meeting pattern designers that I hadn't met before, really getting to know some vendors that I didn't know that well. Um, and then the last part of Zombie Knit Apocalypse was a maker's market. And so they had a market and it was only open to uh, retreat attendees for the first couple of hours and then it opened to the public the second half and you might have seen some podcasts on here talking about um, their experience and it was very fun at first I was like I'm doing really well I'm not buying that much yarn and then I went back again for the public meetup and did more damage so I'm gonna walk you through my yarn that I got and what I'm thinking of making with it um, just cause it's, I love seeing what other people get. It sparks creativity and ideas. And it's a great way to learn about new dyers or see new colors that I wouldn't have thought together. Um, so before I get too far along, just a shout out to Black Pearl Magic. They did project bags for all the attendees. It's the custom vinyl for Zombie Knit Apocalypse and the theme this year was up and away or I don't know, it was adorable. Anyways, I was thrilled. I peeked into the bag. We got a registration. I was like, is it? Is it? And they're like, yes, it is. And we also got a really nice mug and we got some yarn. So everybody in their uh, bag got a skein of fiber or yarn from Yarnaceous, Cato Yarn Co. Or, oh, I can't remember because I didn't see this yarn at all. It was from a naturally dyed maker and their yarn was gorgeous. I just can't remember. Maybe it had something to do with berries. I'm going to find it. And I'm going to drop it in because I want you all to be able to know equal opportunity um, what generous dyers donated to the mystery bags or to the registration bags. So I got this skein of yarn from Yarnaceous Fibers. Um, Maggie's out of Salt Lake City. I've met Maggie a couple of times and just really enjoy talking with her on Instagram. Um, this is on her Salta fingering base, which is 85% merino, 15% nylon, 437 yards. So this was like my freebie skein, obviously matched the color and the theme. The way they set up the event is that every registrant won a raffle or won an item or went home with something in addition to their goodie bag. So I ended up winning another registration bag. So I got another bag and then I bought more, or I got one of each of the skeins of yarn that was in the retreat bag. So I ended up giving my naturally dyed yarn to somebody who had gotten it in their bag and wanted to do a garment out of it. And I wanted them to have the yardage for it. But then, so I now have, I, I now have two skeins of this yarn from Maggie at Yarnaceous. And then I have this one really cool skein, the Dawn of the Zombies from Kato Yarn Co. And I thought that was really pretty. That purple with the orange kind of reminds me of a sunrise or a dawn, dawn zombie apocalypse. Anyways, so this was freebie yarn. So that doesn't count against my budget. <laughs> wonder why I'm bad with money. So first, here's my bag that Emily from Fangirl Fibers gave me. It's the perfect tote. It says, uh, in my defense, I was left unsupervised and the yarn store was open. Oops. Again, iridescent. I'm always having iridescent moments. It fits yarn perfectly, especially standing up straight. You can get two full rows of yarn in this. I will say you're going to notice a theme in my first purchases. <laughs> All right. So my first up stop was at Lavender Loon. Um, this is a sport weight. It is 80% non-superwash merino, 15% yak and 15% silk. It is as dreamy as it looks. It is silky. It is, has a sheen to it. It's going to be so drapey and I'm going to make this shawl with it. I say this shawl because I can't remember the name. I just remember seeing it on display in Sam's booth and being like, Ooh, it's cables, which I don't love, but it's going to be so worth it because it feels like it's so my style. So this is destined to become a shawl at some point. Uh, and I just loved the sage green. Speaking of sage green, 
my next purchases were from Knitting Lizard um, Fibers, which is a dyer based here in Minnesota. Her name is Liz. I have gotten to know Liz more the past couple of months and really enjoyed spending time with her. She came with us to the yarn shop hop. She was part of our group. And then we helped Liz set up and tear down her booth at the public market um, at Zombie Knit Apocalypse. So while I was setting up, helping her set up the night before the market, I of course had to look at the yarn. You, ca you can't help but look at it when you're picking it up and hanging it and figuring out the best color combos. So I immediately was drawn to this yarn here. This is a one of a kind um, lichen, lichen, right? That moss. It's the super soft sock, which is 75% 19.5 micron superwash merino, 25% nylon, 463 yards. This is destined to become some sort of tea. It is beautiful. I love it. So again, are we sensing a theme here? But wait, there's more. So then um, Liz had just recently posted her Witcher collection for pre-order. And she had all of the bases and colorways on display at the market. And I have been seeing boucle everywhere. And of course I had to jump on that boucle bandwagon. So I pre-ordered four skeins of <laughs> boucle from Liz on... <laughs> this colorway. So this is Long Days. It's from the, I've never seen Witcher, so I don't know any of the, the names or I don't get it, but I just know that I was obsessed with this. I originally was going to get it on her Yak fingering base because it was so moody, but I wanted to try Boucle. There's a bandwagon and I am firmly on the bandwagon. Um, so it's Boucle, 240 yards. I'm going to knit some sort of sweater. Um, Knit California, Leslie did a podcast episode a while ago talking about boucle and she picked out some patterns and there was a really cool kind of cropped sweatshirt that she posted. And so I'll probably do that with it, but who knows? So, uh, oops, sage dreams, everybody. <laughs> Clearly I have a color preference and this is it. So, this was all public or the private market shopping. So I'm done. I go back to the hotel. I eat lunch. I have my knitting. I'm ready to keep moving. And then I say, well, maybe I should shop for another soldatna because I really liked knitting that. And I've talked to you all about like how future knitting plans include knitting a neon soldatna. So I was walking around, walking around, walking around trying to figure out what I wanted to do. Muse 2320 had the most amazing neon DK and someday I will buy that because if you haven't purchased from Muse, she has incredible color sense. But then Emily from Fangirl Fibers kind of drew me and we had been messaging on Instagram. Um, and so then I was like, hey, like help me brainstorm some ideas because the first color I saw was this really, oh shock, it's green, this really beautiful mint color, this minty green. It's like, huh, what would you do for a soldatna? And so she pulls out this whole bag of yarn to help me find DK weight. And we end up with like this pastel neon dream. So I'm going to do a soldatna with, this will be my main color, this purple, this minty green, white. So just, a, I have white, Yarn, bare yarn in my stash from dyeing um, and then this yellow and I just think it's so pretty so I'm not gonna rush in at this this will be a spring knit um, somebody said to me I was gonna look like an Easter egg and I was like hmm, thank you I'm gonna embrace that uh, Emily has such a beautiful eye for color I was drawn to nearly every colorway in her booth and she was talking to me a little bit about like the work she's done to do color. Um, and I really appreciated that. Plus we talked books and we talked about steamy books, fourth wing, anybody, fourth wing, anybody. Emily introduced me to that book. I quickly destroyed that book because it was so good. So this was my haul from Zombie Knit Apocalypse. So everything has a plan. Um, but you know, right for now, it's sitting in my stash because I have no self-control. And you will know what I mean when I share my acquisitions from Flock Fiber Festival. No self-control whatsoever. 
so that's it those are my acquisitions that was kind of my um in knitting inspiration of what's coming up like i said i've been really busy i've had so many fun meetups interactions with so many of you um i've been um, going down to get Ben's farm and hanging out with sheep and learning how to skirt and process wool. I was selected to do a really cool project through the Free Rivers Fiber Shed, their sheep to shawl project. I'm going to film a whole episode just on that. So you can come with me along the journey of picking out a fleece, cleaning the fleece, washing the fleece, processing it, spinning, knitting, naturally dyeing it. I'm going to bring you with me on this because like I'm going back to the roots of um, fiber and it, it's exciting to work with some non super wash things and it's the most exciting to work with local shepherds and makers and to really learn from them I'm just I feel it's cool this world that I've fallen into that uh, the experiences I've been able to pick up is really exciting so I've been talking for a while it's been really good to just come back and kind of chaotically, I feel like, talk to you all about what I've been doing. Um, but it's good to cross it off the list. I, this doesn't, I don't want you all to feel like this isn't a chore for me. Um, but I, I want to do it well. And I want you to enjoy this. As much as I enjoy talking about it, I want you to enjoy listening to me talk. Um, so thanks for tuning in. If you haven't, if this is your first episode. <laughs> Welcome. Thanks for coming to this space. Um, and I will be back soon with more about my yarn adventures. Don't forget about the giveaway. If you haven't already, comment below and tell me what you would use these gorgeous buttons from Twin Mountain Handcrafts with. And I'll throw in the set of wildflower stitch markers. Like, subscribe, whatever whatever. I hate myself for saying that. Anyways, I will talk to you all very soon. Take care and we'll see you next time. Me again. I failed to film a little segment earlier about my plant of the episode. Here she is. So the plant this episode is a Sigonium. It's the red spot tricolor. It's got some beautiful variegation to it. Spots of white and red and pink. Pink, not really red. Anyways, I just picked this up a couple weeks ago. She's acclimating very well to the house. I hadn't bought plants for a while and that's probably because I spent too much money on yarn so I needed to try and save the budget. What budget? Uh, it's doing well. I have it in my little plant room here. She's been sitting on this shelf under some light girl lights. Um, ooh, whoops. I will say I am so hot in this room. So like yesterday, it's 90 plus 95 degrees, feels like over 100. And so today I decided to open up the window to get all that humidity in here and that heat because I know all these tropical plants will love it. And I do not. I blocked the vent so I'm not wasting air and it's hopefully going elsewhere in the house. And so I'm hoping they're all just going to, they're going to be really happy with me. So I'm going to wrap this up because I am sweating just talking. It's awful. All right, bye. Again, I forgot to tell you all that while going to a friend's cabin in early July, I found a sheep farm so of course I went and I bought a CBM fleece and it's perfect. Oh hi. So 
came down to get Bent's Farms, which is south of where I live, for a meetup. We're going to talk about processing wool. Um, but I'm walking just through the property, kicking up some birds. Because I just wanted some time to myself, and I just wanted to show you all like how beautiful. It's just such a lovely view. So I brought some knitting with me to maybe find a spot, stop and knit, maybe closer to the sheep. Um, but just getting outside, it's like the first day where it hasn't been a bajillion degrees, it feels like, which is really nice. So yeah, I thought we'd get out. Can I show you my, this moment, look at this. They're like little mini cactuses, I can't remember the real name, but it's fun. <laughs> 